वंदे पन्नग भूषण शिशिधर वंदे पशूना पति वंदे सूर्य शशाक वन्यनयन वंदे मुकुंद प्रिय वंदे भक्तजन आश्रय वरद वंदे भक्तजन आश्रय वरद वंदे शिव शंकर फ्रेंड्स वी आर ए बंडल ऑफ डिजायर्स आई एम एट टू कम अक्रॉस ए पर्सन हु इज फ्री फ्रॉम डिजायर्स desires are infinite if one desire is fulfilled another desire springs up there is no limit we would like to have the luxuries we would like to have the vehicles we would like to have the position we would like to have power we should have the wealth command everybody and in short we want to be the lords of swarga swarga is heaven heaven is full of pleasure you have the vichyashrava the most beautiful vehicle fastest very comfortable airavatam you have chintamani capable of fulfilling all desires Kamathenu, the wish fulfilling cow; Kalpataru, the wish fulfilling tree. What is it that we do not have in heaven? Ramha, Urvasi, Menaka, Tilottama, Gritaji. Every beautiful girl is available. Such such is the luxurious place our people have created. and that is a swarga we want that we desire to have that swarga and what is the mind of that indra always afraid he has no safety he has no security he is always afraid if some king is doing tapasya he is afraid that he will come and dethrone him if some rishi is doing tapasya immediately he will send ramba to tempt him and spoil his tapasya if ravana does if any rakshasa does any tapasya he is afraid of the opponents he is afraid of the aspirants he is afraid of the colleagues He is afraid of his subordinates. He is afraid of his duty. Indra does not have peace of mind. Always he is soaked in luxury, no doubt. But his mind is tossed about in tensions. Always he is afraid. Modern mind is fond of luxury. You have missed all this materialism. You have missed all this luxury, power, position, etc. Our minds are not peaceful. Indra is like that. It is the swarga, the luxurious society, luxurious food, luxurious accommodation. Everywhere we want, and at the same time, unfortunately today. we do not have the peace of mind mythologically if we study the description of elysium if we study the description of heaven if we study the description of swarga we find the king of swarga without peace of mind if you have a very beautiful wife you want to marry her and when you are traveling with the beautiful wife by a train or by an aircraft or by a bus minds are not peaceful because everybody in the train appears to be a rowdy everybody is looking at her 
and i don't have the peace of mind i cannot enjoy the company of my beautiful wife <laughs> because everybody is looking at her when i am wealthy when i have the wealth i have the cash in my pocket everybody in the train appears to be a thief thieves are not outside thief is with me i have the cash and i suspect everybody to be a thief ambitious julius caesar mark antony we have a brutus everybody appears to be an enemy tapa the man in power he is scared of the subordinates he is scared of the colleagues he is scared of the next man because the next man is always praying the boss should die the boss should die the boss should die so that they can have the promotion everybody is trying to stab from behind him indra is like that indra is the king of heaven everything is at his command he has the full pleasure where does yoga enter now the desire for pleasure is one the desire for peace is another desire for pleasure is materialism desire for pleasure is swarga desire for power is swarga but along with that power there is pain there is tension there is anxiety there is worry there is stress stress you cannot enjoy anything <coughs> mythologically we are that now what is the next step the desire to be outgrown outgrow the desire when you outgrow the desire the evils of the pleasure will not come and that is shiva he does not want anything he has outgrown the desires he has overcome the temptations manmadha comes no nobody can tempt him god is far away he has come to woo him to marry him nothing doing he won't open his eyes vasanta and manmadha together have doctored their weapons doctored their shafts flowery dark shafts no i don't want who is the richest person he who does not want anything when you want something there is no limit to the want when you don't want anything i am the richest person bill gates supposed to be the richest person and somebody asked him is there anybody who is richer than you sir he said yes there is a person who is richer than i am who is that once upon a time i was traveling i landed in a particular airport i wanted to buy the newspaper the newspaper vendor was there and i did not have enough change to pay him that boy looked at me he gave me the newspaper and when i wanted to give him money he said no sir i don't want and then after some time again i went to the airport again he gave me money in the newspaper i could not pay him because i did not have change and he did not want after i became very rich i remembered that boy went to him and i tried to pay him some thousands of dollars he said no sir you are not the generous person i don't want your money then i realized the man was generous when he was a poor i am generous when i am rich he did not want anything he is richer than i am where does the richness lie in the heart where there is no want in the mind where there is no desire swarga dipati has all desires no peace of mind he is a bhogi is not a yogi 
and yoga depends upon tyaga and that tyaga he does not have this paper vendor has the tyaga he does not want it socially we should be yogis normally we come to prashant kuti for various desire purposes one physically we want to be slim and healthy two intellectually we want to be sharp and intelligent three we want to be peaceful mentally and finally we should be useful to the family society societal responsibility we stop with the physical exercises to be healthy we don't go beyond that no yoga is comprehensive it is not the materialistic fulfillment of desires that is all in all and we find the rich people without peace of mind we find powerful people without peace of mind they come with so much of stress to manage the stress to reduce the stress to be peaceful and now how to develop that how to grow the desire mythologically swarga is the first step second step is kailas and in that kailas you find three wonderful qualities number one no temptation he is not tempted at all by manmatha he is not tempted by the beauty of parvati he is not tempted by the environment vasanta vasanta is a favorable climate spring season good climatic condition and then there are so many other things never did he want even amruta what did he take visha he took the poison not only do you not have the temptations not only do you want any luxury you want only one thing and that is to be helpful to others tyaga tyaga raja it is shiva he took that poison what is the effect <coughs> he is the savior of the society nobody wants to go and occupy his throne on that icy peak himalayan mountains nobody wants to take his position in the burial ground and cremation ground he does not have a simhasan he does not have any luxury and he is not tempted by anything and that is tyaga first is bhoga we want when that bhoga is not with the peace of mind we would like to overthrow is there a shiva like that elsewhere i love my mother why she gives the best of food to me whatever is yesterday's food kept in the fridge she takes kyagi she does give the best to me when the birthday comes she wears a simple saree kyagi not on mount kailas you have lord shiva in our house as mother he is available he is available and who is the most respected who is enjoys the highest veneration it's my mother it's lord shiva whom do we worship a tyagi not a bodhi and that tyaga is to outgrow desire and what are the benefits people come together flock together unite together there is no mutual hatred in the place where there is a tyagi you find the rat of vigneshwara not eaten by the snake of shiva the snake of shiva is not pricked by the peak of brahmanya the vehicle of lord shiva is not pounced is not swallowed by the vehicle simha of parvati people of various temperaments various minds various swabhavas they come together the head of the family is shiva the head of the society is shiva he is a tyag we would like to serve our boss if he is a tyagi 
If he is a bogey, we would like to occupy his throne, we would like not to be his subservient servants. People come together. Tyaga is the seed to sprout yoga. The second step, desire, outgrow desire. These are the advantages. Socially, we now need a yoga bhumi, a tyaga bhumi, a united bhumi, integrated yoga, integral yoga, integral medicine, integrated medicine. There are so many systems of medical practices. In one practice, diagnosis is easy. In another practice, prevention is easy. In another practice, curative systems are easy. And all the systems are specialized in one way or another. Put them all together, the best of everything. East has something best, West has something best. Ancient has something best, modern has something best. The best of everything, not to enjoy the pleasures of the body, to enjoy the peace of mind, so that the entire globe is peacefully going on. And that is Tyaga Bhumi, not Bhoga Bhumi. If we are to take the modern world into consideration, the most of the Western countries are Bhoga Bhumis. Ancient Oriental countries are Yoga Bhumis. And this Yoga Bhumi has also started aping the Western luxurious society and has experienced its evil influences. Now we are trying to return to that Tyaga Bhumi, to outgrow desire. And that outgrowing desire is Mount Kailas. Shakti comes, Parvati came with all her Shakti, and a person who outgrows the desire will not starve. Annapurni, mother comes, gives food. What is lacking in him? He is always peaceful. And the next step, higher than that, perhaps the another aspect of it, another dimension of it, he is Vaikuntha. Here, Tyagaraj, to outgrow ego, to outgrow desire. And then the third step is fulfill the desires of others. Who can fulfill the desires? Only a yagi can fulfill. My mother can desire, fulfill my desires. My government, if it is a yaga bhumi, it will fulfill my desires. And that is your great yoga narayana. And Goddess Lakshmi came to him because he does not want anything. A step further he goes, he gives his Lakshmi to all the people. Does anyone give the wife? Narayana, Vishnu asks Lakshmi, that man is doing it up as you go, let him be blessed with you, by you. He gives wealth to the people, he fulfills the desires. There are three steps. Desire to have the luxury, your Bhaga Bhumi. Outgrow the desire, second Bhumi. Third, fulfill the desires of others. Swami Vivekananda says, ours is a land of Tyaga and Seva. Ours is a land of giving peace to others, prosperity to others. And that prosperity is Lakshmi. Vaikuntha is another mythological state. He sacrifices himself so much, he comes down to do good governance. And that good governance is Dushta Sikshana, Sister Rakshana. Not only is he detached from everything, but he is helpful to everybody. And that Yoga Narayana we find him coming down descending to the earth in avatars to solve the problems of the society, to help the society, to elevate the society, to give comfort to the society, a yogi is useful. 
He is always beneficial. He is always generous. We find him taking the shape of Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, Nrsimha, Vamana. And we find Sri Ram in him, Sri Krishna, all the avatars. And in all the avatars, the purpose, he does not want anything. He wants to be useful to somebody. What is yoga then? Not to be luxurious, not to be materialistic, not to be indulgent, not to be stressed, not to be worried, not to be always in tension, but to be peaceful like Shiva. And then useful. Shiva is useful. He swallows the poison. What is that poison? From every factory, a produce comes. From the other side, the poisonous fumes also come. When you are going by a luxurious vehicle, poisonous fumes are coming. When there is a factory, poisonous liquids are coming. And this poisonous liquid or fluid or the gas, who is consuming nature? Who is metamorphosing nature? And that work is done by the boss. A good boss blames none. A good boss owns the blemishes of others. If my subordinates do not work well, I own that. If there is victory to the office, I give the credit to my subordinates. Former President Abdul Kalam once upon a time sent some rocket. Unfortunately, it failed. Crores of rupees you dumped in the sea, people were criticizing. And then his boss came. Don't worry, I shall face the brunt of attack. I shall not blame anybody. Next time, Abdul Kalam was successful, he was the project chief and it met the target properly and then Abdul Kalam's boss said, Mister, you take the credit. When there was a failure, the boss took it upon himself, Shiva. The poisonous flumes. Who is a yogi? In this society, we should think of that yogic concept. Let us not be selfish to confine our yogic concept only to the body breathing. Pranayama and exercise. It's a wider concept. Yesterday, I was trying to go within introvert, wherein from the body to the mind to the intellect to the peace and Brahmananda, we deep go in. Now, extrovert, in what way a yogi is useful to the society? The simplest definition, Swarga, desire, outgrow the desire, Shiva, and be useful to everybody always, Tyaga and Seva. Swami Vivekananda's entire philosophy can be condensed into four phrases or four words. One is self-confidence. Number two is self-reliance. Number three is self-dedication. Number four is self-realization. All the four you will find in being a yogi. Be you, they alone serve, they alone live. Who live for the welfare of others, the others are more dead than alive. Let us observe the two facets. One is to go within, one is to go without, outside. When we find this description, peaceful is Shiva, peaceful is Vishnu. Useful is Shiva, useful is Vishnu. Yoga can be condensed into just two words. Peacefully useful is a yogi. Usefully peaceful is a yogi. Shiva is peacefully useful. Narayana is usefully peaceful. Indra is selfish, indulgent, power, position, 
prosperity, vehicles, luxury, always in fear, always in tension, always in anxiety. The modern society has to go from materialism to humanism, from humanism to divinity. When we go to the highest state of divinity, we are true followers of our yoga bhumi, divya bhumi, deva bhumi. This adhudamana bhumi is being the gift of the ancient rishis to us. It's our responsibility to see that we rise from materialism to humanism, from humanism to the all comprehensive divinity. The summon substance is grow, outgrow, and be a person to fulfill the desires of others. Desire, outgrow the desire, and be a person to fulfill the desires of others. Usefully peaceful, peacefully useful is yoga. Sri Krishna Paramatma. Peaceful is, useful is. Shiva, peaceful, useful. Vishnu, peaceful, useful. Any head of the family should be a yogi. Every mother is a yogi. Let us try to emulate the great yogis of this country. Let's meditate on Sri Krishna. Oh. Mm -hmm.